All right, starting out with a look at that radar, we do see that we have a smattering of shower activity. Not all of us seeing it's hit and miss here along the I-94 corridor, but near the international border, a little bit more organized with those showers. And we're even seeing blue up there by the Winnipeg area as some cold air behind the cold front bringing some snow showers there. Moving into Grand Forks, particularly northern Grand Forks and crossing over into northwest Polk County right now is a batch of fairly heavier showers. We also have some trailers back there up into Walsh County as we look north on I-29. These extend down towards the Northwood area and are heading in toward Mayville as well. Let's track these right here moving through the northern reaches of Grand Forks now moving off to the east at about 15 miles per hour. They'll be in the uh, Alvarado area now, but moving out towards Warren by 453. Now off to the west of Fargo, moving through the Wells County area for Harvey. Uh, we're seeing those showers are still 100 miles off and we are still seeing them moving only at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. So we got a bit of time before our chances of rain increase here, but look at the cold air punchy in with this cold front. We can see 50s in Langdon, 60s in the Devil's Lake Basin, holding on to 70s for now in Grand Forks. But as we'll see momentarily, there's some shower activity moving through your area right now. 70 in Fargo, Moorhead, 68 for Oaks and beautiful 60s to near 70 in Lakes Country, including you near Lake of the Woods in Bedette at 70 degrees. All right, here's our weather wiggle working its way through. We have a storm system delivering rain to where it's needed very badly. Much of New Mexico in extreme drought as well and flooding conditions in southern Missouri, northern parts of Arkansas heading into tonight. We have severe weather again in Texas. You're looking now at our home of economy location in Grand Forks as the showers are passing off to the east as we head into the evening, so that's a northeasterly, northwesterly flow now, and that's a cooler wind. Right now we have calm winds gusting to 20 miles per hour. That's an interesting uh, report of wind there. 70 at Hector International, 73 at Moorheads Airport. Your hour by hour forecast this evening. Here's our thunder showers. These will be moving by the eight o'clock hour into northwest Minnesota. So places like Grigla and up in towards Bedette having a chance of showers. Those will extend into Polk County near Faustin by the time we get close to 830. Notice punching into the doorstep of the FM area. A few showers. We'll see passing shower chances continuing mainly with the most intense being in northwest Minnesota and the Northern Valley. We'll continue to see showers until after midnight before things end from west to east. And I think by around 2 to 3 a.m. it'll be out of here completely. Patchy fog, low clouds and 30s for most of us to start out a cooler Thursday morning. Now we'll see some peaks of sunshine, but that northwest flow will be gusty at times and keep us feeling much cooler tomorrow than what we did enjoy for today. The gusty winds spread region wide as we go through the afternoon gusts to 35 or 40 miles per hour with temperatures peaking only in the low 60s at best. The way things are looking, it looks like a quiet day, but we cannot rule out a very quickly passing sprinkle of rain. How much rain? A trace, but if you happen to be under one of these convective showers, you can see a quarter of an inch of rain mainly northwest Minnesota being the best chance at seeing some measurable precipitation. Temperatures ramping up in Fargo to 62 degrees, passing clouds and pretty breezy northwest winds through the afternoon. Cooler along the international border with 50s at four in the afternoon there, but the rest of us low 60s to near 70 in Aberdeen. A flower. Oh no, a dandelion. Tiffany captured in Comstock. We'll take it. We love spring and we love green 65 and sunny on Friday, Saturday. Wow. 80 gorgeous degrees in the FM area. A cold front moves through changing things on Sunday, but still pretty good weather heading into your Cinco de Mayo as we go into next week. I love dandelions. I think they're fun, aren't they? They're so happy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, Hutch. Uh -huh. Springtime means more of us are getting outside and that comes with all the bugs that you encounter when hiking or working in the yard. Ticks start emerging in April and stick around until fall in tall grass and wooded areas. The tick attaches to exposed skin and could potentially give you Lyme disease. Symptoms include fevers, chills, headaches, fatigue, muscle aches and joint pain. Experts say it's important to take precautions. You can bring them inside your house and so they may drop off the fur or you're sitting next to your animal and then they could crawl on you and then, you know, um, potentially attach um, to an individual in the household. To prevent bites, wear a long sleeve shirt and pants and tuck your pant legs into your socks. Wearing light colored clothing could help you spot a tick. And if you find one of these pests on you, you should use tweezers to remove it. Get as close to the skin as you can and pull out and up, but make sure not to twist or squeeze.
Coming up, the pandemic taking yet another toll on families. Toy prices are going up. We'll explain why when Valley News Live at 4 continues.